Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. December 26th, George Washington. George Washington represented the colony of Virginia at the Continental Congress, and in June 1775, he became commander of the Continental Army. In 1781, General Washington and a French general defeated the British forces at Yorktown, and five days later, the British surrendered, ending the Revolutionary War. From 1789 to 1797, Washington served as the first president of the United States. During that time, he established the executive branch of the government, the U.S. cabinet, a six-ship U.S. Navy, and a treaty with Spain that empowered the U.S. to travel on the Mississippi River. On this date, in 1776, he led his troops across the Delaware River, which is what today's story is about. Circumstances can tear a man down, but well-chosen words can turn a man into a hero. Christmas time, 1776, was anything but merry for General Washington and his troops. Washington wrote in his journal, I am wearied almost to death. Ill-fed, ill-dressed, and hundreds just plain ill. The Continental Army's hope of winning the war was fading fast. Washington figured he needed a win, and he needed a win now. That without it, by the new year, he may have no army remaining. So he developed a difficult plan, a plan that some would say was actually bizarre. About 1,400 Hessian mercenaries held Trenton, New Jersey, across the Delaware River from Washington and his discouraged Continental Army. The plan, three groups of soldiers would cross the nearly frozen Delaware River and conduct a sneak attack against the Hessians. Washington set the date of the river crossing for Christmas Eve, 1776. By the time most of the soldiers had reached the launching point for the boats, a cold and wet drizzle had turned into a driving rain. Washington and his 2,400 soldiers crammed into high-sided cargo vessels, 40 to 60 feet long. Soldiers loaded horses and heavy artillery onto wire-guided ferries. The river was not frozen enough to walk across, but it was too clogged with frozen chunks for boats to pass without a significant effort. By 11 p.m., a howling nor'easter storm made the miserable crossing even worse. One soldier recorded, it blew a perfect hurricane as snow and sleet pounded General Washington's army. They crossed where the river was about 300 yards wide. But once across, the men had to march through the dark nine miles on roads slick with ice and snow. The Continental Army did not have enough boots, so some of the men tied rags around their feet. Others were barefoot. Clothes and weapons were soaked, and some of the guns would not fire. Washington ordered the men to attach their bayonets. Tired, soaked, and some with frostbite, the men gallantly moved forward. And Washington rode up and down alongside the marching troops and motivated his men with praise and encouragement. By the time the ragtag army reached Trenton three hours late, the sun had risen. Washington had lost the advantage of attacking in the dark, but he refused to turn back. Follow me, he shouted as he led his men into battle. The Hessian garrison did not expect an attack on Christmas Day. Their commander was injured early in the battle, and without him, they seemed disoriented. The Continental Army surrounded Trenton and defeated the Hessians, and history and artists celebrate Washington crossing the Delaware. But Washington did not see it as his big victory. The next day, in a letter to John Hancock, Washington wrote about his men. Their behavior upon this occasion reflects the highest honor upon them. The difficulty of passing the river in a very severe night 
and their march through a violent storm of snow and hail did not in the least abate their determination. In Hebrews 10, 24, God tells us, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Are you in the midst of a difficult situation? Does your team or family need a win now? Is God calling you to lead as he did General Washington? Consider, how can you encourage others in this difficult time? Circumstances can tear a man down, but well-chosen words can turn a man into a hero. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.